Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A major case, a major update. Today, a teen who was shot by an SAPD officer in 2022 in court for charges that he picked up after he was released from the hospital in that shooting. Eric Cantu facing two counts of evading arrest. This morning, the Bear County District Attorney's Office announced it would be filing a motion to recuse itself from the case. Cantu in October 2022 was shot outside a McDonald's parking lot by then officer James Brennan. Cantu was charged with evading arrest and aggravated assault, but the cases were dismissed days later by the DA's office while Cantu was recovering in a hospital. A year after the shooting, Cantu was arrested for evading arrest on two separate occasions, one in September 2023 and the other in December of last year, and accused of evading police in a third incident. Cantu is also charged in a June 2023 theft case in February, KSAT discovered that the shooting incident was discussed in text messages between the DA's office and the criminal justice reform group, the Wren Collective. We did reach out to the DA's office asking for a statement about its recusal from this case. A spokesperson for the DA's office said, quote, the motion and the basis for the recusal are set out in the motion to be filed this week. No other comment will be provided, unquote. Kandu expected back in district court on April 11th and in county court on other charges on April 17th. New at noon, an elderly man is recovering after a home invasion on the far north side. Deputies say a suspect knocked on a man's door early this morning. This is a neighborhood near TPC Parkway and Evans Road. When the 79-year-old victim opened it, the suspect made his way inside. The elderly man told police that the suspect then pushed him into a bathtub in the bathroom and hit him. When deputies got to the scene, they found that someone matching the suspect's description was outside of a different house. BCSO says it looks like he was trying to get into a parked car there. He was detained, but so far is not cooperating with investigators. That elderly man was taken to the hospital. Also new at noon, construction on a new elementary school in Uvalde has started. The Uvalde CISD Moving Forward Foundation first broke ground on the replacement for Robb Elementary late last year. The project was delayed in December because of issues during the bidding process stemming from the lack of funds to complete construction. In total, the school will cost $60 million to build. The foundation behind the construction has raised more than 65% of that. Now the project is getting a cash boost thanks to a $1 million gift from John L. Now III, as well as Silver Eagle Beverages. Taking a live look outside on this noon on Monday, clear but windy. And with that, Sarah Spivey becomes a potential for fire danger. Yeah, that's right, Dylan, especially out west, closer to the border where they just didn't get as much rain as those of us in San Antonio today. There is a risk for a grass fires because of the windy conditions. Take a look at satellite right now. You can see all the clouds moving east of San Antonio, east of south central Texas. We're in the low 70s right now in the Alamo City, 72, 76 in Del Rio, 67 in Kerrville, 66 in Rock Springs. But when you take a look at the winds, we We've seen a few gusts of up to 30 miles an hour here in San Antonio. Even stronger wind gusts out now uh, west of San Antonio toward Del Rio, 35 mile per hour wind gusts. Ozona, 35 mile per hour wind gusts. So with that in place, there is a risk for that high fire danger. In fact, we've got a red flag warning for all these counties in pink here, again, mainly west of San Antonio, but it'd be a good idea to avoid any kind of outdoor burning around the Alamo City today. Coming up in the forecast, we got chilly mornings for the rest of the week. I'll tell you what you need to know in just a few minutes. Ursula, Dylan. Thank you, Sarah. The family of a teen found strangled and dead in a ditch is hoping for justice. Last night, they followed in Caitlin Hernandez's final footsteps. The 17-year-old went on a walk around this northeast side neighborhood March 12th. Hours later, police found her body in a ditch on Dell Oak Drive. Hernandez's aunts hope this march pushes someone to come forward with answers about what happened. It's not fair. It's not fair. And we won't stop until my niece gets justice. But we know SAPD is working um, hard on this case, and we have our faith in God and the community's prayers. 
Crime Stoppers is offering a $5,000 reward to catch Caitlin's killer. If you have any information, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You can remain anonymous. Arson investigators on the hunt for a fire starter who sparked a fire at this hotel in Leon Valley. It happened around 2 in the morning at the Econo Lodge on Wurzbach near 410. We're told someone started the fire in one of the rooms and then took off. Crews were able to quickly put it out. As of right now, there's no information on that suspect. And a woman is recovering after crashing her car into a tree on the northwest side. The woman's daughter was also in the car and walked away with only minor injuries. It happened yesterday evening at the intersection of Floyd Curl and Hamilton Wolf. Witnesses say the woman was racing another car moments before crashing. Investigators are still looking into that claim. And family and friends of Mauro Mendoza Santos continue to keep his memory alive. The 63-year-old man died trying to help a stranger. This is video from a vigil held for him yesterday evening. He was killed Thursday night on the side of 281 near Hildebrand, where he had pulled over during a storm to help a stranded driver change a tire. He was hit by an oncoming car and killed. San Antonio police say the crash was accidental and no charges are expected to be filed. A San Antonio teenager is using his personal health struggle to help save someone else's life. Meet Zach Baza. He was just six months old when he had a transplant surgery. He received a small intestine, a pancreas, and a liver after his organs failed. Well, he's now 16 years old, and he loves to read and swim. Things he gets to do thanks to another family's sacrifice. It's a blessing, basically. And it's it sounds unreal, but... Um, it's just um, that I'm grateful to have what I have. Just some proof as to how important organ donation is. On Wednesday, we are hosting a town hall to share the facts about organ donation. We're going to be talking about the importance of organ donation and the challenges and misconceptions many of us have about it. And tomorrow is Diabetes Alert Day. University Health will hold a resource fair focused on the disease. Plus, you can learn more about A1C and speak with medical experts. The Texas Diabetes Institute is hosting the event, and you're encouraged to register beforehand. We have a link to do that on ksat.com in the KSAT community section. The Mad Shuffle continues in March Madness. We're going to bring you up to date on the winners and losers over the weekend and the new matchups that are coming up next. The first Latina astronaut to go to space is sharing some of her experiences with us. We'll hear from her after the break. How does it feel to be in space? Well, you know, it's, it's an experience that's quite unlike anything that you can really experience on Earth. You're floating, everything you're dealing with is floating, and you, you have to figure out, um, you know, you have to be very methodical and figure out <laughs> how you can get things done well in that environment. And then the second thing, of course, is the views of Earth from space. It is Women's History Month, and today we're sharing Dr. Ellen Ochoa's story. She's the first Latina astronaut, as you saw, to go to space. Tiffany Huertas with the doctor's days soaring through space, working at NASA, advocating for science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. It's an honor to meet you, Dr. Ochoa. To celebrate um, Women's History Month, we spent some time getting to know veteran astronaut Dr. Ellen Ochoa. If you can describe that day when you flew aboard that space shuttle Discovery 1993, tell me about that moment, how it was for you. Well, uh, you know, it was something I'd been uh, dreaming about for a while, so it was, it was definitely exciting for the day to come. Ochoa became the first Latina astronaut in space when she flew aboard Space Shuttle Discovery. Our primary objective on that flight was studying the Earth's atmosphere and particularly the problem of ozone hole and ozone depletion. Ochoa even took time out of her busy day in space to play the flute. You took music to space. One of the things we were doing was shooting um, a video, um, part of a liftoff to learning series that NASA had at that time, kind of comparing a day in space 
with um, a day they might be familiar with um, on Earth. And so we did talk a little bit about hobbies. Ochoa went on to participate in three more missions. In addition to supporting NASA's human spaceflight goals, I did have this opportunity now that really opened up um, to be able to do outreach, to reach out to lots of different kinds of audiences. But of course, a lot of them were focused on um, people or students who are not well represented in STEM, whether that's women or people of Hispanic um, background or other groups who are underrepresented in STEM. Talk to us a little bit about your Hispanic background. My dad's parents were Mexican. And um, after they had gotten married and started a family, uh, that's when they emigrated to the United States. It's a background where um, I think um, at the time my dad and his older brother sisters were growing up, um, it certainly not only wasn't encouraged to speak Spanish, but was actually pretty discouraged. And certainly they faced um, uh, other obstacles as well. Uh, so it's nice to be able to play a role now, um, especially with students out there who are also of Hispanic background to show, you know, the, the sky's the limit or maybe the sky's not the limit, right, <laughs> because of space. In 2013, Ochoa became the 11th director of NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. She was the second female and first Latina to assume the position. What message do you have for other women or young girls? I think it's important to set high goals for yourself and not to limit them based on what you might hear from people, again, who don't know you, who don't know what kind of qualities you have, a willingness to ask questions and to learn. You know, that that is what is important. Tiffany Huertas, KSET 12 News. Very wise words and words that you know, Sarah Spivey might love. <laughs> yeah. Our meteorologist uh, STEM promoter in our own KSAT Weather Lab. We got a fun science with Sarah this Wednesday. We're going to be doing some fun dry ice experiments. And people are prepping for the total solar eclipse two weeks from today. We're on that in a bit. As for the aquifer, the aquifer is down two tenths of foot over the past 24 hours. And when we look at the pollen count, oak remains high. It's down a little bit from yesterday, but definitely still up there. Molds, hackberry, and mulberry are all low. All right, taking a look at the rest of your day today, we're going to be dealing with some winds and temperatures will be warming into the upper 70s. Winds are going to be sustained from the west or northwest at about 20 miles per hour, a few gusts up to 35, and then a mild evening with temperatures in the 50s by midnight. Chilly, though, tomorrow morning. Those details coming up. That's our girl. She is a San Antonio staple. We're proud to call her our colleague and our friend. Jessie de Collado has served our community for decades through her journalism. And now the Chavez Legacy and Educational Foundation has recognized her for her years of hard work and dedication. Jessie is the recipient of the foundation's 2023 Aguila Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations to her very well deserved. They're just throwing awards at her. She's racking days. them up lately. She's got a whole row of trophies and awards that are, some of them are pretty nice looking too. She's making us look like we're not doing our job well. <laughs> One day. One day soon, hopefully. All right. Uh, we are going to SA Live and today we got Mike and Jen. Yes, yes. And, and you know, to, to throw about Jesse too. And I just her. the sweetest, so sweetest sweet. lady. You see her in the hall, the way she yep. is on TV, right? It's just like that same personality, consistent all the time. Sorry, yes. we have to give her more love. We yes, love Jesse. <laughs> all right, today, International Waffle Day. You guys like waffles? Mm, yes, yes, of course. Uh, however, we've got a question for you. Waffles, pancakes, or French toast? French toast, as I've gotten Just older, I'm a French toast gal. I'm a French, French toast, toast gal. Really? I'll say, oh, I was okay. going to go with pancakes. Pancakes, yeah, the, I, I think for a good Sunday yeah. brunch, though, waffles. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. With the whipped cream, some strawberry. Yeah, but with the French toast, you've always got the ingredients in your house. Exactly. Already. Easy that to make. That is true. Good that point. That is true. Yes, that's a very good point. I love but that. at least when we all go through the breakfast buffet, we'll all pick something different so we won't <laughs> argue over it. So, anyway. Yes. Scan the QR code on your screen and we'll see which one uh, comes out on top. But I mean, I'll take any of them. So. Uh, yeah, I know you will. Yeah, yeah. We'll have three on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see in about 45 minutes. Okay. David Sears, we're here. You say all three. All three. Sarah. I am with Mike. I love waffles. I do. And here's the thing. I particularly like the ones at uh, with the continental breakfast in the shape of Texas. Oh, <laughs> yes. you know what yes. I'm talking about? Yeah, every Pretty motel awesome. and hotel in, in Texas, Texas has, has that. that. Yes, yep. exactly. I don't know. It's a, it's a little nostalgic, too, for me, I think, when I was going on road trips. Do you eat the panhandle yeah. first? or? No, uh, Rio Grande Valley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the rain that we saw this morning. You can see that we have seen all of that rain push on off to the east. It's now out near the Houston area. Uh, El Campo getting some of that rain to moved out of the Hallettsville region. We saw a decent amount of rain in parts of the hill country, but around San Antonio, it was fairly spotty. So let's go ahead and zoom in on some of those rainfall estimates. Uh, near Kerrville, about an inch of rain fell along I-10 between Comfort and Kerrville itself. And then as we get closer to San Antonio, really as far as rainfall goes, only a couple tenths of an inch maximum in most places. Most locations saw a few hundredths to a tenth of an inch of rain. As was expected, this was not expected to be a very uh, impressive rainfall event. Although there were some neighborhoods that got a decent amount of rain, and I'm looking at you, Rigsby Avenue, right inside of 410, about a half an inch uh, to uh, an inch of rainfall fell there. So some isolated pockets of decent rainfall. But as I mentioned, all that rain has moved on off to the east, and we are looking at skies clearing and it being pretty sunny out there. Things are starting to get a little windy as well. Here's a look at that weather set up again all that rain marching on off to the east a pretty dynamic system across the United States right now you can see all the snow from uh, Minneapolis all the way even down to the panhandle of Texas we've got two low pressure systems and a double dose of cold fronts the first one moved through with that rain earlier today and the second one's up in the panhandle right now how dynamic is this system while well, we're dealing with everything from severe weather for parts of Louisiana and Mississippi to winter weather in the panhandle of Texas. And what we're left with here is somewhere in, in between. We've got high wind and fire danger for areas, particularly west of San Antonio. And you can see just how much colder that air is north of that second front. I mean, it's well below freezing in parts of the panhandle. We are not going to get to below freezing. I don't want you to worry about your, your spring garden, but I do want you to be aware that the next couple of mornings are going to be a little on the chilly side. Here's a look at those morning lows, 46 on Tuesday and we'll be near 49 Wednesday and Thursday morning. Temperatures will rebound in the afternoon and it'll be one of those weather patterns where you want the jacket in the morning and you definitely don't want it in the afternoon. But just to be aware, you will want to turn on the heat of your car probably in the morning hours for the next uh, few morning commutes. As we look at the current wind gusts, you can really clearly see that winds are starting to pick up west. Del Rio wind gusts of 30 miles an hour, Rock Springs 33 miles an hour. Even in San Antonio, we've seen a wind gust of up to 30 miles per hour. As we head into the remainder of the afternoon, those wind gusts are going to pick up even more. We'll see a few wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour in San Antonio. By the evening, though, the winds will calm, so you won't need to worry about the winds howling in the overnight hours. We tend to take down our wind chimes whenever we get wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. They'll be back up by this evening. As for fire risk, please remember that even though we saw a little bit of rain today, we still have a higher fire risk. So try to avoid any kind of burn piles, avoid using tools that create sparks, dispose of cigarettes properly, do not drag those trailer chains, and make sure not to park your vehicles on grass. So our high temperature today, this afternoon in San Antonio, will be close to 78 degrees. Warmer the further south you go, Catula 84, 87 in Laredo, 
window. Cooler the further north you go behind that cooler air. 73 in Kerrville, 71 in Rock Springs. It'll be 75 in Bernie this afternoon. New Braunfels, Seguin, it'll be close to 80. 80 in Floresville and 80 in Dixon Smiley. Easter's right around the corner. It's this weekend. So as we take a look to the Easter weekend forecast, the biggest thing to know is that it's just going to be slightly uncomfortable. A little bit more humid, a little bit warmer with highs in the 80s, but nothing in the way of rainfall to ruin any kind of Easter egg hunts or anything like that. As we take a look at the forecast again this week, it's going to be chilly in the mornings, comfortable in the afternoons, a smidgen of a chance for rain on Wednesday. That's about it. Hey, coming up, as I mentioned, we are two weeks away from totality, total solar eclipse. By this time, two weeks from now, people are going to be looking up with their eyes to the skies, but only half of San Antonio is in the path of totality. So I'll have a, an update for you coming up. And hopefully with eye protection, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Eyes to the skies with those solar eclipse glasses. And by the way, we have got on Wednesday glasses giveaway. We're going to do oh, a glasses awesome. giveaway. Perfect. Yes, yeah, some more perfect. information about that. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah. The NCAA says there are no perfect brackets left on its own game, CBS's or Yahoo's. So if your bracket is busted, you're not alone. For the lucky few still in the game, we got to look at the latest March Madness scores still ahead. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the March Madness brackets. After the first weekend in the East Region, the defending champs UConn beat Northwestern 75-58 to advance to the Sweet 16, where they'll face San Diego State. In the other half of the East bracket, Illinois took down Duquesne easily with an 89-63 beatdown of the Dukes. And the Iowa State Cyclones beat Washington State 67-56 to advance to the Sweet 16. Over in the West region, the North Carolina Tar Heels were able to pull away late against Michigan State. Tom Izzo hasn't gotten past the Sweet 16 since 2019. And the Alabama Crimson Tide beating Grand Canyon thanks to 26 points from Mark Sears. Now in the bottom half of the West, Clemson took down the Baylor Bears 72-64. to and the Arizona Wildcats able to hold on and beat Dayton, advancing to the Sweet 16. Midwest region top seeded Purdue and Zach Eady making a statement after going one and done last year. They destroyed Utah State 106-67 and Gonzaga beat Kansas. So it's Purdue and five seeded Gonzaga with a trip to the Elite Eight on the line. Creighton defeated Oregon in double overtime. That was late Saturday night, while Tennessee eliminated Texas. So it's two-seeded Tennessee and the three-seeded Creighton Blue Jays set to battle it out in the Sweet 16. Finally, in the South region, an in-state showdown between number one seed Houston and ninth seed Texas A&M. The game lived up to the hype. A&M hit a buzzer beater to force overtime, but Houston proved to be victorious in the end. So now the Cougars are going to face Duke, which took care of business against James Madison University out of Virginia. JMU is out and Mike's Oakland is out. So the last Cinderella story alive in the South region is 11 seed North Carolina State. They're in for a meeting against second seed Marquette in the Sweet 16. Marquette fighting off Colorado by a four point margin. My choice to win it all, Arizona from Tucson. They're still in it, so uh, not a hard weekend for them, but I think it gets tougher from here. I think Arizona is a good choice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I did my research this year, unlike past years. Are you, are you in the, the draw with, with money on the line? I am here at KSAT, yeah. Hopefully it goes well. I think I'm in ninth place right now, so some work to do still. Okay, we'll be right back. Taking a look outside, as Sarah told us earlier in the newscast, those wind gusts this afternoon could reach as high as 35 miles per hour. And Sarah, that really creates some difficulties if that's the case. Yeah, definitely gusty. But I'll tell you what, it's sunny. And this time, two weeks from today, we want sunny weather because we are expecting a total solar eclipse, the path of which will pass through parts of San Antonio. Guys, it's just 14 days away. I do have to mention, though, still two weeks away, it is too early for us to give a reliable cloud cover forecast. So keep that in mind because whatever you see online right now, 
we have to be within a few days to get a reliable cloud cover forecast. We will keep you posted. And a reminder, only half of San Antonio is in the path of totality. Right now on KSAT.com, you can go to this interactive map that I made where you can see, am I in the path of totality? You can zoom into your neighborhood, see how long totality will last. And we've got this awesome search feature here where you can type in your neighborhood to see if you're in the path of totality. Speaking of, we have got our first Eclipse glasses giveaway this Wednesday, March 27th. Meteorologist Mia Montgomery and I will be out at Yanaguana Garden at Hemisphere. We have 300 glasses available to give away for free. The line starts at 4 p.m., but glasses will not be handed out until 6.30. So come hang out with us at Yanaguana. And thanks to Sunshine Cottage for being there with us as well. Now this afternoon, we're going to have gusty winds with some high fire danger. It will be chilly in the mornings this week, but comfortable in the afternoons. And I've got a look ahead to Easter weekend where it'll be noticeably warm and humid. Details ahead. Thank you so much, Sarah. We have a tragic and cautionary story coming out of Houston. An eight year old girl has drowned after she was sucked into a drain pipe while she was swimming in a hotel pool. This happened at a Doubletree Hotel on the city's northwest side of town. The girl was initially reported missing, but a search crew reviewed the security footage and what they found out is that she had gone underwater and did not resurface. That's when they drained the pool and sent a camera almost 20 feet into one of the pool's pipes. Here's right now as a pump was put in there and it was probably malfunctioning and because of the open pipe that she ended up in was supposed to be pushing water out. It might be beside that pipe, there was another pipe that actually had a big plastic filter-like screen on the front that's supposed to be sucking water in. So I, I know there was one speculation last night uh, from somebody that knows quite a bit and everything that, uh, that the pump was wired wrong. So it was sucking instead of pushing. Those drains can be dangerous when they malfunction. So a word of warning to all pool owners as we head into the swimming season. The search crew said it took about 13 hours to free the little girl's body. An investigation is now underway and this pool is closed. A terrorist massacre at a concert outside Moscow left at least 137 people dead and hundreds more injured. The suspects appearing in court. ABC's chief global, global affairs correspondent Martha Raditz has the latest. The horrific toll of the mass shooting evident at the smoldering scene of Russia's deadliest attack in decades. More than 135 men, women and children slaughtered, hundreds more injured. It was Friday evening in Moscow when four ISIS-K terrorists armed with automatic weapons shot their way into a concert hall at a shopping complex. The audience inside was just waiting for the rock band to begin when gunfire ripped through the hall. All the while hearing the relentless, terrifying burst of automatic weapons fire. An eyewitness saying the men fired directly into the crowd, face to face. Another witness saying when the shooting was over, the ISIS-K gunmen hurled explosives as they fled. Within minutes, black smoke and flames pouring from the facility, trapping many inside and caving in the roof. Russia saying they captured and charged these men with the shooting, one clearly bloodied and beaten with reports of torture as well. Russian President Vladimir Putin claiming without evidence that the men were headed to Ukraine. He never mentioned ISIS-K despite its claim of responsibility. The U.S. confirming the attack was carried out by the Islamic extremists as well. White House officials saying they had warned the Russians of an imminent risk of an ISIS-K attack just two weeks ago, an attack they said could specifically target a concert hall. Instead of heeding the warning, Putin said the U.S. was trying to blackmail Russia. Now, the Biden administration says several Chinese hackers that targeted American companies 
were working for China's Ministry of State Security Spy Agency. Multiple federal agencies cracking down on these hackers with likely criminal charges, sanctions, and a multi-million dollar reward for information to find them. The group reportedly used a Chinese technology company as a front to cover their hacking activity. A similar crackdown on the same group is said to be underway in the UK. Officials were set to publicly identify the hackers as soon as today. Tomorrow, the Supreme Court will hear arguments over the abortion bill Mifepristone and whether the FDA lawfully relaxed restrictions on the drug to make it easier to access to into pregnancy. It's the first major abortion case since Roe v. Wade was overturned in 2022, and the stakes are enormous. Medication abortions account for more than half of all abortions in the U.S., and a ruling in this case will have a major impact on the ability of women to access abortion in states that still allow it. It also marks the first time a court has second-guessed an FDA drug approval, potentially opening the door to other challenges of agency expert decisions across the government. The New York fraud judgment against Donald Trump just gave a bit of breathing room to the former president to appeal his decision. The New York appeals court this morning agreeing to block the attorney general's seizure of more than or nearly $500 million worth of Trump-owned property. Instead, the lower court... Rather, the court lowered the amount down to $175 million and extended the deadline 10 days for him to come up with the money. Trump is appealing this civil fraud case in which the judge ruled him guilty of defrauding banks by inflating the worth of his properties to get the loans. The banks testified that Trump paid them back on time and in full. In response to today's decision, Trump posted on social media, quote, we will abide by the decision of the appellate division and post either a bond, equivalent securities, or cash, unquote. Our latest Know My Neighborhood focuses on Northern Hills in Valencia. What neighbors say they enjoy about this part of town? Our latest edition of Know My Neighborhood taking us over to Northern Hills in Valencia. Separated by Nacogdoches Road, these neighborhoods are tucked between Thousand Oaks and O'Connor. There's a big draw to this area for a lot of people who live here, the city's nearby Northeast Senior Center and Golf Course. The two don't really need any selling, but David Sears gave it a try. If you're looking to stay healthy and have some fun doing it, and you're 60 or older, do we have some places for you? There are natural workouts and workout machines. There is pool, ping pong, bingo, and a variety of classes like painting. So put this color right in this area. And it is all in one place, right in the heart of the Northern Hills and Valencia neighborhoods, the Northeast Senior Center. This is a real nice addition to the neighborhood. Hayden Norris is a staple in this place. He's here five days a week, works out his 88-year-old body three days a week, works out his mind the other days playing games like Rummicube. And if you're going to win, you really have to be sharp. This, this, and this, which gets me in, and then I'm out. Helen Garcia has been coming to this senior center to work out for a year and a half. I enjoy it. The Northeast Senior Center opened in November of 2015 and is a place of pride for the seniors in the neighborhood and surrounding area. A lot of them come and just visit, play bingo. You know, you look forward to it. Some of those folks are aspiring painters under the helpful instruction of teachers like 30-year veteran artist Andy Villarreal. This is one of the highlights that they look forward to every week because they get to do something for themselves. You know, I'm used to teaching college kids and they're younger and they're a little more rowdy. Not to say the seniors can't get a little rowdy, at least for them. You're watching one of the features of the center, a monthly women's pool tournament. Yes, there is a trophy. Oh, I've won several times, so it's not on here. Norma Omedo played when she was younger, life took over, but she's been back at it for a little over a year now. <laughs> I just got to get it a little bit closer. This senior center is not the only major attraction in this community. A lot of folks like to putt on over to the Northern Hills Golf Course. It has become a big part of the Valencia Northern Hills communities, especially for seniors. At one time, this was a private country club. A developer wanted to buy it from investors and build apartments, but the deal fell through. With the help of people from the neighborhood, the city purchased the course and club, and it's now part of the Alamo City Golf Trail. Mary Carricker lives on the course and was a member when it was private. 
when you have a house on a golf course, you know, you have some value there. You're always afraid of once that goes away, the value of your house goes away. That didn't happen. Matter of fact, since the city took over, it has become one of the most popular courses on the trail. We used to be able to just show up and go play. That's not that way anymore. But that doesn't keep Mary and her husband from playing as many as three times a week. Great course, great convenience. It's a well-kept secret, Northern Hills is. We just feel very fortunate to have the golf course here. And just in case you were wondering, no, David doesn't live there. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't move in after that story. Dylan's not here replacing him. Of course not, of He's course not. He's just off today. Not a great day for golf because of the winds. Yeah. Winds. It's, you know, it, it looks deceiving out there. Right, it's beautiful outside. We've got plenty of sun, but the winds are starting to pick up from the west. Temperatures in the 70s, skies have been clearing. The aquifer is down two tenths of foot over the past 24 hours. The wind's probably going to be stirring up a little bit of the oak, too, in spite of the fact that we got some rain this morning. Oak is high, past 3,000. Molds, hackberry and mulberry all low. Coming up in the forecast, a look ahead to Easter weekend. Word to the wise, don't go outside with a hat on this afternoon unless it's on there tight. And if you're getting ready for that eclipse two weeks from today, yeah. Get that eyewear ready. Yeah, yeah. The, the special eclipse glasses. Now, if you're in the path of totality, for the brief moment of totality, you will not need the glasses. But for everything else leading up to it, you got to protect those eyes. Hey, we got a little bit of rain this morning. You may have noticed it on your uh, commute out and about this morning. Mostly we saw a few hundredths to a tenth of an inch around San Antonio, but there were some neighborhoods across the hill country that got a little bit more than half an inch of rain in between Kerrville and Comfort. And then we also saw, uh, again, around San Antonio, anywhere from a few hundredths to a tenth, tenth of an inch of, rain, at, of rainfall at the airport we got 18 hundredths of an inch of rain. And then in some neighborhoods, like out along Rigsby Avenue uh, between between just inside of 410, we got about half an inch of rainfall there. So some neighborhoods got some decent rain. But for the rest of this afternoon, it's going to be gusty, and that'll lead to some high fire danger. Here's a look at the weather setup. As we take a look across the state of Texas and the nation, big dynamic system bringing snowfall from parts of uh, Minneapolis all the way down into the panhandle of Texas. Yes, the panhandle of Texas is getting snow right now behind even some colder air. This is uh, really common for us to see sometimes in spring and these differences of cold and warm air and that creates severe weather too. And there's some severe weather risk for parts of Louisiana, including New Orleans up into Mississippi, but we're stuck with some high fire danger and some wind as well. So here's a look at those current wind gusts across the state. You can see that it's much gusty Gustier further out to the west. A zona wind gusts of 37 miles an hour, 38 mile per hour wind gusts in San Angelo. Here in San Antonio, so far at most we've seen 30 miles per hour, but as we head into the rest of the afternoon, that's going to pick up a little bit. This is a look at 2, 3 o'clock. You can see wind gusts of up to 45 miles per hour out near Del Rio. That's why areas west of San Antonio have a higher fire danger this afternoon. As we head toward dinner, that's when our wind gusts are really going to pick up. 35 mile per hour wind gusts, 40 mile per hour wind gusts, all possible in San Antonio. Again, even higher out to the west. But don't worry about it in the evening because winds are going to calm down after sunset tonight. We won't have much of an issue. So looking at the rest of the day in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, mostly sunny and windy. 78 for the high this afternoon, right around dinner when it gets windiest, it'll be in the mid 70s. And then this evening is going to be come cooler quicker than it has the last couple of nights. We'll be in the mid 50s by 12 by midnight. So when we get the clear skies, the calm winds, that's when temperatures really drop. And by tomorrow morning, it will be chilly. In fact, for the rest of this week, we're really going to have chilly mornings and comfortable afternoons. Here's a look at the temperature trend over the next few days. Tomorrow morning, 46 in the morning hours, but 74 in the afternoon. This is typical Texas, right? You need the jacket in the morning and you don't want it in the afternoon. That's going to be the case Wednesday and Thursday when we wake up in the 40s, top off in the 70s. And then as we head toward Easter weekend, the humidity is going to come up. It'll be noticeably warm, but at least we won't have much rain to contend with. So on Saturday, 81, a little bit noticeably humid out there. And then Sunday, 
Peaks of sunshine likely on Easter itself, 83 for the high, so not too bad on Easter weekend, just a little bit more muggier than usual. A small chance for rain on Wednesday, but this is not looking like a good week for rainfall. More news after the break. Welcome back. We're getting geared up for SA Live in just a couple of minutes. Breakfast foods were on the item menu earlier. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make some French toast after now. the show here. Yes, <laughs> we got you hungry. We'll, we'll be over. <laughs> okay. And we have got something, though, as well. And Chef Brian Rojas from Belia Eatery is here. Welcome, sir. What are we Thank making you. here? We're making arepas, which are like a Venezuelan Colombian corn pocket that we're going to be stuffing with a avocado chicken salad mm. and a couple other flavors that remind us of Miami, black beans with sofrito, braised beef, and sweet plantain. And you said Miami is such a great I melting know. pot of different flavors and cuisines and everything, right? That's correct. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Speaking right, of food, yeah. yes. Uh, Dylan talked about it earlier. Which one would you pick? A waffle, pancake, or French toast? That is our question of the day. We have that QR code up there for you. We Can we do my... a sampler platter? <laughs> I know. Why can't you pick all three? Hey, all of the That's above. Come Just on. <laughs> all right. Jewelry. You always have beautiful jewelry on. Okay. And if you'd like something special for your loved one, Brittany Guerrero from Buenos Vibes is here. Welcome. Good to Hello. see you. Hello. Yes. All right, just exactly what you want, customizable, right? Come to me if you need your customized pieces. We have our charm bar where we have very many selections to choose from. We have the chains you get to choose. And we also have an engraver, so you can engrave pictures, dates, initials. Wow. All of that, you know, Those adding that. sweet nothing. Yes, yes right? the personalization. Yeah, great gift idea. <laughs> all right, we're going to show you that in a second. Yes, also men's fashion for spring. If you need some looks and some tips and tricks from the pros, we got that for you. And Jen was checking out a food truck with a little bit of knowledge, yep. right? Yes, a taste of Cajun and Southern goodness. I can't wait to show you guys this one. That and a lot more on SA Live.